It's really wonderful to see this incredible turnout this evening. And it's really a great pleasure and honor to be able to host the 17th Karmapa. I wanted to give those of you who may not be familiar with the work that we do here at Stanford. My name is James Doty, and I'm the director of the Center for Compassion and Altruism Research and Education. And our mission is to understand on a neural basis those behaviors and their complexity, and to also appreciate how one's peripheral physiology is impacted when you are kind, compassionate, and altruistic. And those effects are profound. These types of behaviors, if done with intention, result in lower blood pressure, calmness of spirit, a boost in your immune system, and increased longevity. As part of our work we do in addition to research, we have education and we have developed techniques whereby we train individuals in how to, if you will, potentiate their compassion and be compassionate with intention to maximize those benefits I just mentioned. This training is based actually on a Tibetan Buddhist compassion practice with input from PhD psychologists. Additionally, we have a speaker series, and one is an endowed lecture, uh, one is a named lecture, and then the other thing that we do, which is one of my most favorite, is that we have uh, something called Conversations on Compassion, where we bring individuals from different religious, spiritual traditions, we bring business people, we bring people from a variety of backgrounds who live their lives with compassionate intention, and by doing so, have a profound effect in the world. Before we begin the program, I would really like to thank all of those who work with me at Seacare here. There are an amazing number of volunteers and people who work with me closely, and I would like to thank them very much, and perhaps we could give them a hand before we start. While I am the founder and the director, the reality is, like so many things in our lives, we do nothing by ourselves. It is with the support and care of other individuals that allow each of us to reach our potential. I would also specifically like to thank the co-sponsors of this event, the Dalai Lama Center at MIT for Ethics and Transformative Values, Ming Chad Tan, who's here in the audience, Why does he get applause? <laughs> He's always the handsomest guy in the room. Um, and I would also like to thank Owsley Brown. Where's Owsley? And uh, Steve Luzow, who unfortunately is not able to be with us this evening. These individuals are uh, longtime supporters of the work that I do here. And again, without those types of support, what I do and what our center does would not be possible. The presence of His Holiness this evening is part of an extraordinary and remarkable journey 
that many of you here know, having left Tibet in 1999 and arriving in Dharamsala, uh, and then what he has done since that time as the spiritual leader of the Karma uh, Kagyu lineage of Tibetan Buddhism. To give a more detailed bio, I would like to ask my friend for many years and uh, the individual who is the founder and director of the Dalai Lama, at, uh, MI, uh, Dalai Lama Center at MIT to actually come out and make the introduction of His Holiness, uh, the Venerable Tenzin Priyadarshi. Yes. Good evening. Welcome to a beautiful day in California. I was going to tell Jim because of this compassion curriculum and the program that he has uh, developed, uh, we should make a mandatory one-week requirement for all the participants to spend the winter in Boston. <laughs> I, I, th I think there's something about the blizzards. It just makes you really empathetic. <laughs> At the turn of the millennium, about some 15 short years ago, uh, a slightly younger version of myself was studying in Sarnath in Varanasi. And a young monk arrived from Tibet and I was asked to go see him. And I arrived at this beautiful complex uh, to go and greet this individual. And I walk in and there he was playing soccer. And upon my arrival, he was informed and he came inside the room and the next thing, we started discussion, uh, started discussing was on Buddhist philosophy and the future of Buddhism and religion and so on. And I was really impressed by the ease with which this individual handled the soccer ball as well as the conversation. This individual is, of course, now much better known as the head of the 900-year-old Karma Kagyu tradition. And Besides being a religious leader, he's doing unprecedented work in mobilizing monastic institutions to truly care for the environment. He has a passion for technology. He has passion for encouraging and mobilizing and motivating the youth. And we are truly very fortunate to have him amidst us. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my distinct privilege and pleasure to present to you a dear spiritual friend and a teacher to the world, his Holiness, the 17th, Karmapa. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Your voice is excellent. I should say good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you. <clears> Three <throat> day I'm speaking Tibetans, yeah. Um day Kajuda California Dejan as California Yebe. And Tobut saw the Yam Tua Kogabchung, the Stagabchung, the Indusane, the Tusati and the Stanford University, the Nalolia, two of the Stagabchung, Jess and Samolia, and some did a dress to the Shrine. It's a great joy for me to be here in California together with you and meet many new friends and acquaintances here. It's especially joyful for me to be at Stanford University and to have met so many new friends here. Um, so I'd like to offer my heartfelt welcome and greeting to you all and say thank you for having me. Thank you. During the American Yard, you are a teen superb chair, and there, 
Dawa ni jilia. En kasura da amirge nalolia chur samarwe da ji dragi kogap chumbadi na mizi nalolia si dinde kogap thaba ta ting ta mrup chadi ar si gi si gi gap ji nalolia tu ju jumbu ji nalol dinde dra kogap ting ta thaba ta mrup chadi ar che zang thean go zu se di an zu amirge ni go zu di mi se gi ta kasura zu semlia Jawangi Tsonang Dang Tana Singi Kasure Maobali Maobali Maobegi Kasure Mizigi Dungu is a man, Duduka Komba Kokop Chimbuji is a man, Dumidushi is. Although this is my third visit to the United States of America, it's my first opportunity to have any extended visit to any foreign country. I've received the opportunity now to visit the United States for the duration of two months, and I feel this is a special opportunity for me in my life. At the beginning of this tour, um, I have a sense of a, an appreciation of great freedom, and I feel that the beginning of this tour marks a significant step into the future for me. That they are which cars are compassion, the cars are technology, the environment, the Mangoji, Yamdo, G. Gajre, some day of the Nigeria. A drain to Sane and the day, drain to Sane, the day the Gajre, Narolia, a Sosugi, Kajo Shete, Shane, the Shete, remember Shane, we do Sunday. I don't remember the exact title that this talk was given. <laughs> I know what it's about, and I know that it combines the themes of compassion, technology, and the environment. Uh, but I can't remember the title word for word. But the feeling I do have now is that uh, my own skill level and knowledge level is very humble, and that makes me a little bit nervous. How about you? Yes. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Looks pretty good. <laughs> um. Sidang da kafre. Sidang da kafre religious. The perang ngalia religious background you have in zang. And some some chi kafre chujo otone. Tum zeng mangoru sheje. Philosophy dang dana singi. Kafre da. Tum zeng mangoru sheje. Da dije otone mangoru sheje mendos. And the compassion is that it's city, turning this should all matter something to scares and as some law. And a draw me, but she went in but down. Tana singi around of Chimina and a casual to Jim D. Nalolia. Can the challenge Mangucci Nalolia Salon to receive in the Dijun Zen Dene. And it's the experience someone that the Kashi of the Council has shared chat. Did it see Ted Samshi? You should order something to those. Last year, I was saying, I may say, you should order some bear. I may say, casual that Bobber's game is. Generally speaking, I'm not really interested in speaking a lot about. Um, 
uh, religion and philosophy and putting forth many philosophical and religious reasons why you should think this or that. But I thought it would be more interesting to explore this term, compassion, itself, and what that means on a personal level. For me, I see myself as someone who has come of age in a very challenging time in history, and for that reason, maybe I have some experiences that I can share with you. So I feel that I am capable of doing that, but beyond that, I won't have much special to offer. I'm 29 years old now, and that means I was born in 1985. Don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. I'm 29 years old now, and that means I was born in 1985. 1985? <laughs> 85. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the place that I was born was a very isolated area in eastern Tibet. So lots of people have displayed interest in my youth and what it was like for me when I was young and especially what was it like to become the Karmapa when I was so young. Lots of people ask me about this. But before I became the Karmapa, I had seven years of experience as an ordinary child. And when I reflect on my life up until now, I feel that those seven years were really the greatest joy that I have ever experienced. But not only that, I still feel that those seven years were the most impactful on me in terms of the development of my own habits as a person. <laughs> Searching group, and then I was very late. And the nation, Kashwe, Kuzu, the Gurim, Kashwe, Zizu, Chen, D. Jeliana, come up with him to move the same place. That's all. And the Ecolia, I come up with Sadi, and I was the Archimbushi, and I was the Ziri, the Archimbushi. The Archimbushi, the Ziri, the Yimmy, the Archimbushi, the Ziri, the Yinza, Suchi. So it wasn't the case that I was recognized as the Karmapa immediately upon birth. It was only after I had turned seven years old that the search party arrived in my hometown or my home village, and then the process was begun of recognizing me as the Karmapa. So in general, uh, all my family uh, had, before that point, a very strong habit of regarding the Karmapa as a very precious, sacred being, but none of us thought that that person was going to be me. That part came upon us all of a sudden, in a very unplanned manner. And I didn't see it coming, 
My parents didn't see it coming. Lesson. So my parents uh, accepted this recognition that was being put forward to us of myself as the Karmapa. And in terms of my own reaction to this, my first thought was that this new position would give me many opportunities to play and many more friends to play with. <laughs> so it wasn't really a choice that was put before me. Uh, I didn't really have the choice whether to accept it or not, but my initial thinking was uh, very lighthearted. I didn't uh, consider it a very serious thing at that time. <laughs> North America, Bina, United States, and the Niger Chunya Bina, near that Pamatsuegi, Gatsue, except she had a Kabushira, two men or something to spare, Lo Dunji, the Buji, Pamegi, Zan, Ju, the Trobus and Dumino, Dakanda, the Tini, Lassa, you ready? No, but Kabushira, two or something to Lassa, and the Dissampama. I think that if this had occurred in the United States, it would have been very difficult for the parents of a seven-year-old to just let their child be taken away by someone else. You couldn't really call it an instance of stealing someone else's child, but their child is nonetheless being taken away. So I think in an American context, that would have been particularly difficult for the parents. <laughs> Volunteers, some of that. Latin. How is it? The tradition that the makes easy, some of that. The culture, the tradition, it only makes easy to say. Yeah, so. mm -hmm. Nor were my parents compensated for having lost me. It wasn't like someone said that I'll give you a million dollars if you give me your child. Uh, I was just taken away, and that was done all in harmony with tradition. So since there was such a strong tradition of Tulku recognition and so forth, and recognition of Karmapa, then that made it easier for all of this to happen. ตาจ๋าชมรุเจตาดิตินดิจิกิชาวะสมรุจุงเยสมรุเวเพนโดจุงเยตินดิจิมีนะอันกรานจุงเยเนเยเนเนลุตังตังดุเมเบเนอาต
Pamad Nyam do close Samarve. Mazu Manche DSD Kada Ja Samarve. Sem Jengi Yag Pu Sesham Jim Deorba Lasam Yag Pu Lasam Sesham. Then a family member someone Yam Dode rooms at Nyamada Lasam. Tisaji Pu there's a room G, Pamad there's a room G. Now that sister there's a G, brother there's a G doa Nyamana Lasam. The room G, the room G in Alola, Tazans and at the living rooms and at the summer rooms. Then I am do this very close. Lassam. And the Hindustan shop car changes and shop what I was in the Pamatsugi, the same gent Hamji, and Dungemi, Digi, Malamdi, and shop what I was quiet. The Vichita, young Gondama, Mudrum Drogalia, Tana Sinti, sent the men of city quiet. The Hindustan. I'm grown up somewhere. And the compassion is an end to the Zewegi. That can the king or some mandala, the digging alone, grown up to the devaging mean. This is one of them. That's all. Yaki put it. Yabu, the guru. Guru. Yabu, the guru. Lasso, lasso, tent, lasso. Yabu. Oh. You need to think. Think. I got it. I got it. Oh, you got it. Dictionary. Okay. <laughs> You'll see. I got it. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> so I think that the environment that I was raised in by my parents was an environment of great compassion, and part of this was just the closeness we all shared with each other in our physical space. Uh, my family lived inside a tent made of yak hair. Yeah, all, all family. Yeah. Whole family. Yeah. And so we were all sharing one room. It wasn't a situation where there's one room for the brother, one room for the sister, one room for the parents, or anything like that. We were all in the same room together. So you could call it the living room, you could call it the kitchen. It was just one room. And what I remember in that uh, very... Uh, close space together with my family is the sound every morning of my parents making prayers, uh, expressing sentiments such as, may all sentient beings be happy, may all sentient beings be free of suffering. And then, and again, and then again in the evening, I would hear the words of similar uh, supplications, aspirations, and so on. So in this way, I really feel that I was reared in a, a mandala or a circle of compassion and love. Mm -hmm. the education summer, Buddhist education, the traditional the Pebegi and traditional education summer the intensive summer about the church. Intensive. That the college time that the church the college time is that the college time is that the 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 Experience But then, of course, after I was recognized as the Karmapa, I was ushered off to the monastery and I began, uh, in rather quick order, my formal education in the traditional monastic style of education in the, in the Tibetan Buddhist system. So that's when the hard times started for me. 
uh, it was, the studies were very difficult. Uh, one of the difficulties that I encountered in my studies was that I never felt like I was um, really adequately encouraged or praised uh, in the way that children normally are because no matter how good my studies would be, people would say things like, you're the Karmapa, you should be even better. <laughs> so there were difficulties along those lines, but on the other hand, I feel I did get to experience compassion in profound ways because of the teachers that I met, especially. I feel that I was able to meet many great masters and teachers who weren't just proponents of philosophy, uh, but uh, deeply experienced individuals who embodied compassion. So that, I feel that that really enriched me. compassion is interdependence responsibility I think all of us have our own individual understandings of what the term compassion means. But I think if we called compassion by another name or phrase, we could say that it's all about uh, developing a sense of responsibility in relation to the reality of interdependence. The <laughs> I think when we look at the way things happen in real life, we can see that many problems arise in the context of various issues, such as the environment, such as gender inequality, and so on, because we don't have an appreciation of the interdependent nature of reality, but instead, uh, perhaps unknowingly, adopt a default attitude of selfishness, or basically, uh, basically only cherishing our own concerns. And I think that we can see that uh, this is the root of many of these problems. But uh, technology, the country, she was that you again draw the yard. And the industry, some meets some make it the country, technology, the other, the ตัวเนี่ยเตลเตวเบตาเตลเรวาเจียกิตาคันดาเอ่อเฉเฉรบทบชิดาเลยอะเรตาอินเนทเทคโนโลยีสิลาบิซานะตาคันดากะดุยเ
Kanda project, some of it. Resource we can especially see how this phenomenon plays out in the context of technology. Of course, we're seeing rapid advancements in the field of technology, and what we're also seeing is that we as humans are coming to depend more and more on technological advancements and placing even more and more of our hopes in technology. Uh, but technology is something that constantly requires updates and improvements, and though that constant flow of updates and improvements and changes in turn uh, depends on a great array of natural resources, but we only see what we have in our hands when it comes to technology. We only see the new iPhone that we have acquired or that we want to, to acquire. We don't see directly with our own eyes all the natural resources and all of the human hardship that went into the production of that iPhone. And so our attention tends to remain just at the surface with what we can see with our own eyes, even though all of the information about what went into the production of the iPhone, for example, is available to us. The information is there, uh, it's accessible to us, but still we seem to get stuck with just seeing what's before our eyes and not uh, looking at the longer or larger picture of where this is all coming from. The use of compassion is interest so I think what compassion involves is not just looking at our own situation only, not just looking into our own happiness and suffering only, but considering the state or the reality of other sentient beings, both the sentient beings who are similar to us in their situation, as well as sentient beings who are dissimilar to us in terms of their spiritual traditions, cultures, locations, and so on. Compassion involves developing a concern for those people. ตาดิเนี่ยดูซันติเดกทวาเนี่ยกันตระกัชเวดากันตระจิคอมมอนกราวด์ซัมเมอร์เวดซัมโมโลเลียดิดูซวายบะอเวนิสติซัมซัมโ
that our experience of happiness and suffering is the same as everyone else's. So compassion has this component of awareness to it and knowledge, acknowledging the common ground that all other sentient beings share with us in wanting to be happy, wanting to be free of suffering. And compassion involves building up this awareness of the common ground. So we can take the example of clothing and how we usually relate to clothing in terms of our awareness of common ground and interdependence. We may wear clothes here in the United States, but most of those clothes aren't made in the United States, but in other countries, and oftentimes they are made in developing countries. Uh, developing compassion might involve giving rise to greater awareness of the conditions in the factories where those clothes are made and the hardships that the people, work, the people who work at those factories might endure. Compassion might involve giving uh, rise to greater awareness about their situation of difficulty in contrast to a, the pleasant situation that we enjoy. So it seems to be the case with the purchase of clothing that um, we get the good stuff and they get the bad stuff. We get the good times, they get the hard times. Compassion involves generating further awareness of situations like this and how, that we're, how we're interconnected with others. Compassion is more involved some of the action, dedication, some of the way. That's what we do. That's what we do. Action, dedication, some of the risk, some of the way. The risk is the risk. No, no. That's what we do. We do. We do. We do. We do. We do. So, so, the country you have been sent there, that, then you see that, see that, then they are not up there, which you have seen. Then you just start to imagine the, understand, see that, but, because some of the, the, sympathy, some of the understanding, that they are, the, cash flow, that you should be not seeing, that they do go so much going in, but, that in this case, I do this, then some of the, the, things some of the, things that, but, in this case, one, you want to make some change, then you just start to imagine that, then. Compassion is the same as the philosophy of the viewpoint of the mind. The social range is the same as the chassis of the mind. The chassis of the mind. The compassion is the same as the mind. And that compassion will involve more sort of action. That's the same as the young age. The young age is the same as the mind. Oh. We can also see how sometimes we separate ourselves from the suffering of the world by regarding it as a show that we're sitting back and watching. We might, for example, become aware of the suffering that's happening in the Middle East, the difficulties that are happening in the Middle East, but we're just kind of sitting back and observing as if it were a show to take in, not really involving ourselves by taking action or becoming more dedicated toward that situation. So therefore, uh, compassion means becoming more involved taking more action, developing more dedication, and that means that we need to take more risks, but the habit of ourselves as human beings is that no one really likes taking risks, or very few people seem to enjoy taking risks. We tend to be more comfortable in a habitual zone of having things be easy and smooth for us. But with compassion, as I said earlier, uh, deepening our appreciation that the feeling of happiness and suffering is the same for everyone gives rise to greater sympathy for other situations. And the more we can think deeply in this way, then the less our compassion will become just about watching a show or taking in a philosophy or a viewpoint, and the more it will become a situation where the suffering of, of others are actually a part of ourselves. And if we can cultivate compassion in that way, then I think our compassion will naturally come to entail more action. There's a conclusion to get us on a, you have to get the interdependent language in the garage on a, I'll show you something that's in here, I'll show you something that's in here, 
So to conclude that point, I would say that um, the reason I stress interdependence so much here is because although we appear to be separate from others and that others sometimes appear to be at a distance from us, we're actually very close to others. And uh, the modern world is bringing that reality even more into the fore. Uh, our world is becoming smaller and we're becoming even closer to everyone else we share the planet with. So we're sharing others' experiences of happiness and suffering even more. So even though I appear at a distance from you, you and me are actually much closer together than it appears to be the case. And his suffering appears to be different from my suffering, but his problem is actually, in reality, part of my problem. And my problem is, in reality, part of his or her problem. And when we become aware of that, then we begin to truly take responsibility. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. You answered all the questions I was going to ask. Really? <laughs> uh, Your Holiness, for I think many people in the audience, um, obviously you've had a very unique journey. Um, and you've talked about this issue of being compassionate and related it to the environment. When in your own life did you realize the critical importance of protecting the environment? Were there certain events or was there a specific event that made you realize the importance of this work that you're doing related to the environment? ตัดที่ก่อนชีวิตนั้นเนี่ยเจสเดอันเพื่อดูลูบคุกยอร์บิชอันเดเวลอปด์อันเรียนดูสานะเนี่ยจีทรีดิชเนเวอร์ออฟ
uh, where the, the residents of that area lived a very traditional lifestyle, and we were very close to nature. And, and at that time, the area where we lived was very um, uh, pristine, uh, unpolluted, uh, not affected by a lot of development at all. So I feel that that was a very precious opportunity for me to make a very direct and immediate connection, of, connection with how beautiful the natural world is and to really appreciate that. And uh, because of that connection then uh, and appreciation of, of the natural beauty and importance of that area of the world, it's now been 15 years or so since I left Tibet and I've learned more about what's happening to the environment there, the situation where there's ice and snow that are rapidly melting and that's very um, impactful for the environment. And so that was really what give, gave rise to a natural desire to help. And then sometimes I think that um, if I were to return to Tibet, it, the, the sad thought occurs to me that uh, maybe things wouldn't be as beautiful as I remember. You've uh, initiated some programs within the monasteries yeah. uh, of which you are the spiritual leader. In terms of the environment, maybe you could share with the audience some of those initiatives or some of the thoughts that you've put forth to your follower. Mississippi, <laughs> Education data awareness to chumbu imina then then tell the dance and the manzo ali imina then then koyu shugi karju sun gyo tali imina je lopsum karju bata je shugi an sangbat hetu ya da de re warum che che ngazu gomba da ngab ju sa chili ya da de koyu sun gyo dan de we lopsu yogi basong an e lengu mangbo si pe ya basong gomba ngab ju ngab ju ngab ju yin ru da basong la zi lam ju basong basong In terms of my own actions, there is a phrase in the Tibetan Buddhist teachings that says... No, no, no Buddhist teaching in oh, Tibetan. Tibetan. Yeah, a yeah. Tibetan saying. Yeah. There is a Tibetan saying that says... <laughs> <laughs> that my actions are like a drop in the ocean, uh, which in this case signifies that the environmental issue is a massive issue for the whole world. Uh, so the ind actions of uh, one individual such as myself are obviously not going to be enough to solve the entire issue. But nevertheless, I feel it's really important for individuals to um, take up uh, the cause of helping the environment and do the best they can uh, in, within their own range. And so in terms of my own contribution so far, I see the Himalayan region and the region of Tibet especially as very important for the environmental health of the world. And in that region and uh, the society connected to that region, monasteries play a very influential role in the thought and behavior of the society. So my thought was to begin educating the monks and nuns who live at these monastic institutions in best practices related to the environment and to uh, give them more information and knowledge about why protecting the environment is important. And then if they transform their way of thinking about the environment and their practices in relation to the environment, that, that this in turn will, will be a really helpful and positive influence on the society as a whole because these institutions are so influential. So bearing this in mind, um, we've begun to institute some changes at over 50 uh, monastic institutions in that region. In terms of, uh, there are many people in the audience who have children. Yes. And I know you're not married. No. But uh, I'm sure many, pe 
many people, though, would like to ask, for their own children, how do you have any recommendations on how best they could educate their children in regard to perhaps not being so engaged in technology, at least? <laughs> are any of your children involved with technology? How many of you are involved in technology? <laughs> yes, yes. yes. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, of course, the future is in the hands of children. So how do we best uh, serve the children uh, in terms of educating them about the environment or, frankly, compassion itself? Do you have any thoughts? Wow. Ooh. That's an easy question. <laughs> easy? I don't think it's easy. Um, Ben Every life, they have to significant somewhere. careful Subsection. I Well, when I was young, of course, there was not much technology to partake of and most of the toys that I played with were made of either dust or stone or wood. <laughs> and we didn't have these things that you could twiddle your thumbs with. So, but the one thing that I do remember is the example that my parents set, particularly with regard to the lives of other creatures. They really regarded every life as significant and precious, and they taught us about that. So. Uh, we were taught to protect even little insects and to be careful when we were walking around so that we wouldn't squish them and so on. And I feel that that was a very positive influence. And so really, uh, with regard to your question about children today, I feel that this is one of the most important things is for the parents themselves to practice compassion and try to develop compassion and improve their compassion. And if they're able to do that, then this will definitely have a natural and strong influence on their children, positive influence on their children. So um, that ties into the theme of responsibility as well, because I think if we as um, parents, or if those of us who are parents can take an attitude of responsibility for future generations uh, as part of our reason for developing compassion, that will be very important. Sometimes you hear statements made that in the West, uh, there's a group of people, of course, who are pushing uh, to preserve the environment, especially in the third world or the underdeveloped countries. But the argument from the underdeveloped countries is that, well, you've already destroyed your forests and have done all of these things, and now you're telling us what to do. Uh, do you have any thoughts on that? or? 
Wow. Oh. I guess that's enough. That is difficult. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that is. Daddy, you are a sour. You are a sour. Last song. Daddy, Benji, Kashre. She gave up Shindagi natural resource. Pesho don't have a dog. Young grab is a Kini Sama Lam. Yan Jehob Shindar Tar, the dream of you only you say. Last song. Not the goody. That I give you an assidy. Kandar Tamatelia, Kandar, as Samology, interdependent kind of relationship, Yenza and Samolia, impacting Samolo Yamdo on the Arab streams and digs at the Natagi, compassionate. Dinanaja and Kashroji, Chipsi. Decision maker, Chipsik, Tonum Gurichi in this match, compassionate goes or something. Last song. Mm -hmm. His job. Your job. Our job. Yeah. <laughs> our All job. of our jobs. Yeah. Well, that's a very tricky question uh, in terms of how to deal with this phenomenon of uh, some countries using the natural resources of other countries while at the same time sending all of their garbage to those very same countries. Um, in the end, however, everything is interdependent, so whatever the results are of those types of actions, we're all going to experience them together, ultimately. And that's why compassion is so important. And with regard to this particular issue, I think this illustrates the need for our political leaders and political decision makers to have compassion. One of the things that limit, and you mentioned this earlier, about <clears throat> recognizing the suffering of others or why more people don't participate or yes. act is, uh, is fear and uh, being afraid of uh, uh, what might happen to them and of course this is one of the greatest difficulties, as we have seen throughout history, where people don't stand up for others who are suffering. And by doing so, they believe it protects them, and perhaps it does for a while. But do you have any advice for individuals who are fearful and who are scared? Uh, is there a way that we can come to grips with that fear that you believe? Uh, any advice or thoughts about how one overcomes their own fear of doing things that cause fear or that may cause them harm? Mm -hmm. Easy questions. Easy questions. All your question is not easy, I think. <laughs> mm, a little bit serious. Dirty need to Pena Then also Pepper Summer that can gang at the chasing machine. Chesa and Nala de Ganger de Rashing the Yondi Yare, Chesa, Chick Zenu, the Wunshu, the Chambers, and Yavi Inza. That Dina Lolia Chi. Involvement, Shadi, Kaburchiar, the Mimamuzilia, Mimamuzi, and then Chitinchak, some of the other Nyorosauresha, that Dina Loli Chimina, Naran and Yanga Yoser Sambrochi. Tai Bine Dadi, Narangi Gegi, Sonar of the Caressana, Kandar Tub Kevison and Jandu, Kandar Tilia. Kajre that Tibetan issue with Chasha Yumina, 
ane mimi mampu cik di mana lori ya sugar lagi, dapat cik dia macam kerja sana, mimi mampu cik di tadi politik isu tu pun cik, ada ni tu sana tu politik kan ada rumah sana, jadi mimi mampu cik dia cik aju, tapi ini pebet ni dia ni cakap ini politik isu tu kita cakap macam ni, di mana lori ya pernah cuci dan, rujung dan, kuyu dan, mampu cik ni tu tu cakap dia ni tu sana, ini susu lagi. Ini jadi kerja. Tadi jadi susu itu tak kebaya gua ni. Tak kahdar, benar ana di nalar dia environment cewi mina. Tadi jadi susu pentol cewi yang kau mahu tu. Ini jadi jadi show ini mina langsung. Kalau kau buat ini gua asyik minat buat ini justru nanti kita dah ni. Ni mampu jadi di tempat sama mampu tenggi. Ia sama ada sama tenggi dos. Langsung sama tetap dewan dos tangan je. आधाची यों तो समारे समर जुमादा भी समर शिवजर दांगन से ऐने समर नेंदेन दांग भी ना तेंदेन आजोल या तब्बी बांबुजी ये बजी सोड लासा अ गुड एग्जांपल ऑफ़ व्हाट योर क्वेश्चन पॉइंट्स टू इस द टिबेटन इश्यू एंड द अप्रेशन दैट मेनी Tibetans are facing and enduring. A lot of people don't want to get involved with that issue, and they kind of shove it off to the side uh, because they feel it would be so difficult for them to become involved. Very difficult politics involved, and a very difficult situation seems intractable and so forth. But I think that if we approach it from the point of view of skillful means, and really thinking about what methods are most skillful for us to engage with, then more avenues of engagement can open up for us. Uh, more avenues of becoming involved can open up for us. So some people might say, I don't want to be political. That's a political issue. But actually, it's not just a political issue. It's a, a spiritual issue. It's a cultural issue. And it's an environmental issue as well. And I think that there's many avenues of engagement to bring about positive changes. It's not just the case that we have to do politics if we want to make a change, nor is it necessarily the case that we are going to put ourselves in danger or necessarily expose ourselves to great hardship simply through becoming involved. Uh, so it doesn't necessarily have to be that hard, but not a lot of people think this way. A lot of people immediately fall into the trap of just wanting to push it away the moment that it dawns in mind, saying that I don't want to go there. Uh, but rather, so if we don't think that way, if we actually think more deeply and thoroughly, then I think we'll see that there's many possibilities. One of the things... <laughs> one of the things that we have learned from the science of compassion is how individuals when they see another individual being compassion, compassionate, actually that makes them want to be compassionate. And it shows us really the power within ourselves of even simple acts of kindness can really have a profound effect on those around you. And I think that is a power that many of us oftentimes do not recognize the power within ourselves, and we underestimate what our power is. Yes. Yes. Uh, Maybe that is not a question. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I agree with you. Oh, that. <laughs> um, is my one of my staff members? We had some. Thanks for His Holiness. Ah. We oh. have to. I wanted to. Really? I have something to you. Also. Oh, it's going to. Inside. Yes. Inside. OK. Yes. Secret. But I, I just wanted, before you go, no, we, we have to actually make sure that this, as this is the first stop, <laughs> and we're going to have to put this <laughs> here. Wow. <laughs> but, Thank you. But no, no. We, we also wanted to get a few other things because we don't want you to forget that we're here. Oh. 
Now, we, 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 were at the, we were at the bookstore earlier, and I was looking at a t-shirt, and he said if I was to get a t-shirt for him, it would have to be smaller. So he... <laughs> Thank you. Yes. XL. No problem. <laughs> and then one other t-shirt is, this is one that uh, we have for Seacare, which is our logo here, but it says, Got Compassion. So this is... Thank you. Good. Thank you. Thank you so much. So thank you. So thank you all so much for coming this evening. I hope that this has been a wonderful experience it has for me, and I am so grateful that His Holiness oh. uh, has been with us uh, this evening. And while he is doing that, my wife is in the audience, and I forgot to mention my wife, which I try to always do. This is for you. Ah. Something for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. But I have to say this, it's my wife and my 15th anniversary here soon, and I almost forgot, so I'm trying to make up for that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.